Good evening, folks. This is Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project, Bring you a grand solar minimum update on Sunday, January 28th, midnight, 2018. Join us this Thursday on Revolution Radio, which you can access at freedomslips.com. We'll talk about it later, from 10 to 12 a.m. On Mini Ice Age Conversations with David Dubine and Christian Westbrook, the Ice Age farmer. We'll talk about it at the end of the video. I promise. Colder temperatures to return to central U.S. Let's look at the awesome video. Boom! There it is. Pretty awesome. Totally trippy. Look at, like, wow, man. Wow. That's awesome. February cold plunge. You're looking at 11 in Minneapolis on the 2nd. 21 for the high. Bismarck 20. And then look at it get cold there. Let's just pause that. Whew. Minus one by the third for the low in many. 17 in Boston. 14 on Saturday. Whew. It is winter. <laughs> After all. But you're looking at 38 in Atlanta. 36 on Saturday. Little Rock. 25 Friday. 33 Saturday. And that's a boom. Let's go to the GFS. This is pretty interesting. We have the storm here. Check it out. Let's just run it through. I'll go step by step. Canada, you're looking at a nice low pressure coating you with snow through the second. By the third, there's a little bit of snow extending all the way down the east coast here. Look at February 2nd. Looking at 36 inches all the way across the coast. And now this is what I want to draw your attention to. These are called isotherms. Areas of equal temperature. So when you get them stacked together here, it's a quick temperature change in this violent weather. Watch the isotherms drop south. Low pressure over the four corners, 998 millibars on the fifth, according to the current model, and now showing blizzard conditions from Maine to California on the 5th. They may call this the blizzard of the century, or this model may change, but this storm lasts for days. It builds a deep hole here in the four corners where I am, probably dumping three feet of snow in the mount in the Rockies here, easily on the 6th. Look at the amount of snow here, according to the model. And then as we descend into the 7th, it becomes a hellish ice storm that goes from Mexico to Maine. Is that crazy? That is a crazy model. And that's a boom. That's a crazy model. We'll be watching it. It's a heads up. Let's look at what the snow forecast on the GFS is showing. This is now. This is how much snow has fallen since I uh, made two of these videos and now on the seventh hour of making this video. This is how much snow has fallen since I started making the video. And let's run it through for the next 10 days and you'll see what happens when that blizzard drops down south and then develops right here at the end of the model. It's going to put a lot of snow here in Steamboat Springs. Heads up, three to five feet which is already going to be all throughout British Columbia, Montana, Washington, and you're even going to go all the way south to the Sierras with at least a foot of snow. Good news for you to the 10th of February. And this is the same time that polar vortex is going to drop in. So in the next 10 days, the entire country north of this line will get snow. According to the model, let's go to Europe. I know you guys hate it when I don't talk about you. It's snowing right now in Scandinavia. We're talking Finland, Sweden. It's raining in Denmark. Sorry, Heinrich. But let's run this model through. It's going to be interesting for you guys too. With storm after storm in the UK, on the 31st, you're looking at snow all the way down south. All of UK, all of Ireland, snow on the 31st. So there you guys get your low pressure system. And then Heinrich, looks like Mr. Butenhaus is going to get some snow on the 31st as well. Southern Denmark is going to get snow. That will move north through Denmark. 
And then the Alps. Look at this. This looks pretty heavy. A couple more feet here. A few more avalanches and maybe some more tourists getting stuck. <laughs> I love it when a plan comes together. And then look at the density of the snow in this region here. That's right on February 1st. This is like five feet of snow in this area. I can't wait to report on what happens. This is just a model, but there's going to be explosions, thunder, snow, and hail in this particular area. Whew. UK, you get bomb after bomb. There's more snow in the Alps. It doesn't look like it lets up through the 5th. And then towards the end of the model here, this gigantic snow system coming across from North America is our blizzard that I just showed you. And God, who, who knows? Look at this system. It looks like a hurricane. And all of UK, you're going to get pummeled on the 9th, according to this model. And that's a heads up. Let's move on with the update. This is Scotland. In case you didn't know, they ski there. And there's a lot of snow in Scotland. Check it out. Look, this is a cornice. I had no idea. Care going as much? So this is just some radical footage for fun. Of course it's not going to play. Yeah. Oh, that is deep. That's pow. That's what we get here all the time. We're lacking it. But that is 24 to 30 inches of champagne, gorgeous global warming in Scotland. And that's a boom. You get links to all this. This is the latest snow report from the Alps. Snow depths remain exceptional across many parts of the Alps. Despite these astonishing depths, we're still global warming. And that's a boom. <laughs> oh, dear God. The River Seine continues to rise after record rainfall to centennial minimum levels. River Seine in Paris is continuing to rise, flooding streets and putting museums on an emergency footing as record rainfall pushes rivers over the banks across northeastern France. More rain is expected. We just looked at the GFS. The river is expected to reach a peak of 6.2 meters in the capital city, which is 4 to 5 meters above its normal height. They're not showing the statue here because they don't want you to know that history is repeating itself. And that's a heads up. Let's talk about livestock farmers, farmers struggling with unpredictable weather. We're talking about cold swings causing uh, losses to livestock here. If you don't catch them quickly after they're born, they can you can lose them to the cold. And these cold swings are affecting cattle. <coughs> what gardeners should take away from this winter's extended cold snap? Guys, if you read this article, I'm going to tell you what happened. They changed the growing zones just a few years ago. And this is because since about 1900, the Northern Hemisphere has been warming quite nicely because of these solar cycles. So sometime around 2000 here, they changed the growing zones. And look at what's happened since then. We're now back to 1900 levels. And so they should have never changed the growing zones. So what's happening is that people who have planted things in the new growing zones are losing them because zone seven is now zone eight and the zone eight plants are dying. So if you used to live in zone seven, which is now zone eight, please plant zone six plants. And that's how you really get around this. So everyone should be in the zone they're at. I'm in 5B. I'm really in four i only plant zone three and four here since i got here because you see the predicted progression within three decades the total solar irradiance should be well below maunder minimum levels so that's a heads up and that's what's going on as far as gardening quote unquote they changed the growing zones because of the solar cycles and because of the warming of the earth, which ended in 2000. 
the pause, so to speak, and we'll be dropping off very quickly. <clears throat> That's a heads up. Deadly mutt flows threaten residents nearing uh, erupting Philippine Mayon. Millions of tons of ash and rock from erupting Philippine volcano could bury new, nearby communities due to heavy rains. These are called lahars. They could sweep away entire settlements so that this zone of eight kilometers around the volcano um, really should be heated. <clears throat> Worldwide volcano news. Fuego, Reventador, and Mayon are erupting. I'll leave you links. Earthquake rocks Panama. Very strong shaking at the capital. 5.7 just days after the 8.0 off of Kodiak. Today's quake was at a depth of 21 miles, 110 miles from the populous Panama City. There's a half a million people. <clears throat> and that's a boom. Quake watch. There's the quake. Really only the quake of note. <clears throat> 5.7, Padasi, Panama, 47 kilometers southeast. We have a 5.1 here in Nikolaisai on the uh, Aleutians, but general quiet, and that's because space weather was in moderate conditions, but now you can see we've been quieting down. Look at this drop-off in temperature and speed of the solar wind. Uh, we should be going into KP0 shortly, so we'll all be psychic, and there should be an uptick in earthquakes, and that's a heads up. Guys, we're going to talk about some serious stuff coming up right now. And it has to do with the outgoing long wave radiation charts here at Space Weather News. Now, you know about the KP <clears throat> right here, the planetary K index. And you know that, you may not know this, but geomagnetic activity affects human health. I'm going to leave you links to this chart here. So you can see how geomagnetic storms, which are in the high KP range here, affect human health in these ways. Cosmic ray flux, which happens down here when KP is at zero, affects humans in these ways. And solar flares can affect people in these ways. When we have solar flares, usually we have geomagnetic storm up in this area. So you either have a cosmic ray alert down at zero or a geomagnetic storm above six or seven. And we'll be attending the Observing the Frontier Conference in Albuquerque in February from the 16th to the 18th. So we'll be doing the show from the hotel, hopefully. I don't think it should be a problem. But we're going to be covering uh, the human health risks with geomagnetic activity as we descend into the Grand Solar Minimum, what that means. Uh, because there are several speakers that are going to be covering the topic. There are still a few tickets left, so I'll leave you links to this, OTF Cells, so you can grab a seat if you want to go to Observing the Frontier in Albuquerque and join us. Now, paper coming out that uh, Suspicious Observer shared today, the impact of ionospheric and geomagnetic changes on mortality from disease in the circulatory system is directly related to the chart that I just share with you, that I'll leave you a link to. <clears throat> and what it says is it says that the KP index is not necessarily directly related to coronary events or mortality disease from the circulatory system per se. But what there is a correlation with is ionospheric radiation during the events. So when we have a spike in KP or a geomagnetic storm, the way it is affected across the globe is different in different regions. Some areas have a huge effect and some don't. And the areas with a bigger effect of the geomagnetic storm, according to the long wave radiation and the ionospheric radiation, that is what directly correlates to dead people. Heart attacks, stroke, directly related to ionospheric changes during geomagnetic storm. 
<clears throat> now, guys, back in September, on the 6th, we had the largest X flare of this cycle, an X9. And a member of our community on the 8th had a stroke directly related to the geomagnetic activity that started on the 6th, reached Earth on the 8th when he had a stroke, and then we had an X 9.3 off the back on uh, September 6th again. Is that what that's saying? And here is this amazing footage here on the 9th. I'll leave you links to all this so you can go check it out. We covered it. But what am I getting at? John Casey was probably in a place on the earth that was directly affected by that geomagnetic storm where the ionospheric radiation here on these charts were skyrocketing. And I haven't gone back and looked, but I will do that and we'll report it on it in a future episode. So I'll leave you links to all this information and we'll be reporting on it in February directly from Albuquerque. Now, before we end the video, the Radical Gardener needs three more subscribers to get to a thousand. So let's crush that tonight. I'll leave you links to her. She is prepping. She is a Grand Solar Minimum community member. She's prepping for the Grand Solar Minimum in the D Detroit area, in an inner city. If you live in an urban area and you want to know how to prep, grow food, stockpile, and generally be awesome, come and subscribe to our channel. I'll leave you links. Let's get her above a thousand. <clears throat> There's also a kid in our community, Ice Age Farmer. I mean, Ice Age 2050 here. This is an awesome dude. He's in high school. He's trying hard. He does not believe in global warming, even though in his high school they're teaching it. And luckily, his family does not believe in global warming. So he was labeled a climate denier probably at the age of 12. And... He started this channel and he's trying really hard and he's aspiring to be a climatologist and we need people like him. So let's give him support and help him out on his channel, please. I'll leave you links to Ice Age 2050. Let's talk about the radio program coming up. If you don't know where it's at, it's here, freedomslips.com. I'll leave you links to it. And when you go, come to the main page here, it's at Studio A. If you want to see the schedule, come over here, schedule, and hit Studio A or Schedule A. And that will bring you to the radio program schedule. And you'll see where David Dubine's Ice Age Conversations is if you scroll down to the bottom to our time slot at 10 to midnight, East Coast, Mini Ice Age Conversations this Thursday. Join us. I'll leave you links where we will discuss what's the problem and what is the solution to what is happening, which is the sun shutting down, the magnetosphere waning, and the shit is about to hit the fan. And that's a heads up. I hope you got something out of the video. Subscribe to our channel if you haven't. Share this with like-minded people. Hit up those other people in our community and give them a subscribe. We would appreciate it. Be safe.